Hey everyone, Joshua Kirk here with you once again, and uh, you know uh, I'm gonna be doing something a little different here for this uh, video here. I will still be doing my next review tomorrow, but uh, like uh, I'll still be doing episode 136 of Album of the Day tomorrow. But you know I figured you know since it is you know uh, pretty since it is the last day of 2016 today, New Year's Eve, so. Happy New Year's Eve, everybody, watching this video. Um, I thought I would share with you, uh, you know, uh, for the first time, I'm doing a year-end list here for a video here. Uh, and these are my top, and these are my top 50 favorite albums of 2016. Uh, 16. And the reason I'm calling this a favorites list instead of a best list is because I find, you know, uh, you know, it's a little easier to do a favorites list than it is to, like, you know, do a best list, because a best list does require a little more work, you know, and, you know, uh, for, and I always feel like best lists, you feel you have to make a big statement or something like that, uh, and rather I don't feel like I need to make a big statement about everything in here. Uh, you know, I just wanted, you know, mention some records that I thought were great, uh, that, that I really liked, because, you know, you know, 2016, you know, not a very good year, but, you know, the good news is there, there was some pretty great music that dropped it this year, too. Um, this year, too. And I'm going to do this in three parts. So for this part, part one, I'm going to do albums 50 to 31. In part two, I'm going to do albums 30 to 11, and uh, then the final one will be my top 10 favorite albums of 2016. Because, uh, yeah, I've confirmed the list here. And also, this is my list, not yours, so, you know, don't freak out if you don't see an album here that is probably on your list. So, like, don't freak out if... Yeah, uh, so, so don't freak out if you don't see... if you don't see albums like maybe Chance the Rapper's new mixtape or... Uh, the Life of Pablo. These is the, the these are the albums that I connected to most. Not really yours, so you know. Uh, so 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 don't put on there any snarky comments, you know, or anything like that. Um, or anything like that. Even though I always get good feedback, no matter what, pretty much. Um, and uh, uh, like uh, I'm not gonna do honorable mentions here. I mean. You know, the, I do have honorable mentions for this year, but, you know, I'm not going to do them in video. Just going to focus on the top 50 albums of the year. And all, and finally, uh, I'm going to mention the shirt I'm wearing. You know, this is a new uh, Wilco t-shirt that I got recently. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, and, um, you know, it's going to be... Uh, so, so, yeah, I got this for my birthday recently. You know, just came back from Philly, pretty much, and, you know, uh, you know, it isn't actually my birthday yet. My 16th birthday is on, uh, January 5th, uh, so it's in a few days, so just wanted to tell you that. Anyway, you know, aside from all the little things that I mentioned beginning of the video, let's, you know, just, you know, uh, let's kind of, let's, uh, s stop on the anticipation, and, and right now I shall share with you my tip, my top 50 uh, favorite albums of 2016, starting with albums 50 to 31. So, I have a little packet here. Uh, first, number 50 is the new Violent Femmes album, We Can Do Anything. Uh, Violent Femmes really came through with uh, what is, in my opinion, their most consistent album in like uh, more than like 30 years now. Um, you know, the Wisconsin folk, folk rock trio, again, on this new record, shows what they do best. Quirky lyrics, uh, raw production, the acoustic bass guitar, and the drums played with brushes definitely are very prominent in the mix here, um, as they were on their debut album, uh, released more than 30 years ago. And also, like, you know, kind of, you know, whimpering, angsty vocals. Uh, which, uh, you know, Gordon Gano's voice, I find, ages well. It gets a little more confident with time, I think. So, yeah, a, a great comeback record right here. And the first album that I reviewed in 2016, so it kind of make 
the first album, the first 2016 record that I reviewed this year, so it kind of makes sense that I'm starting with this one. Okay, number 39, number 49 is uh, the new modern baseball record. All right, number 39 is uh, the new modern baseball record, Holy Ghost. Um, a surprising emo record right here uh, from the Philadelphia-based rock band. Um, band who I think with this new album really came through with um, uh, their best, uh, who I feel with this record really came through with uh, their most mature record to date, pretty much. And, you know, uh, and, you know uh, this record really surprised me, uh, considering, you know, I haven't really been that on board with the modern emo scene right now. Um, but, like, this one basically just has all the things that, in my opinion, a good, any good emo album needs. Like, uh, uh, heartfelt, intelligent, honest lyrics, uh, uh, sharp production, as well as uh, very triumphant choruses. It's a short record, only 27 minutes long, but it definitely is an easy to swallow, uh, but it's definitely a pill that goes down pretty easy, so. Yeah, highly recommend this one. You know, just don't go into it expecting a huge reinvention of emo. Um, alright. Number, uh, 48 is, uh, the new Ava Brothers record, True Sadness. Um, this, which, uh, the, uh, folk, which, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, the folk and Americana bands, uh, the Ava Brothers definitely came through with Definitely their most adventurous and most accessible album yet. Uh, but still, I think they did also came through with one of their most musically confident uh, records. It's more melodic, less brooding, but still, you know, uh, you know, nothing less in terms of like, you know, the quality of uh, the record. Um, you know, it's like you know, like the the band still has the ability to tell really intriguing stories in their songs. Um, but also, the al I like how the album shows that they can crank out some really solid hooks, too, uh, on tracks like uh, the single here, Ain't No Man, probably the poppiest song in the band's career, but still great, uh, and Smithsonian songs like that. And, you know, there's still plenty of cuts on here that I think will appeal to old school fans, too, like uh, the song I Wish I Was, which is probably my favorite here. Um, here, um, and, and also the band kind of expands upon, you know, their folky Americana roots by incorporating elements of pop, rock, and even psychedelia. Uh, so yeah, it may surprise some people that I love this record, but yeah, it's great. So, you know, uh, eh, great, because I think it's a perfect balance between what will appeal to the old school fans and what will appeal to the new school fans. All right, number 47, the new Lily and Madeline album, Keep It Together. One of the first albums that I listened to in this year uh, with, uh, because uh, the very kind folks at New West Records sent me, uh, you know, uh, a bunch of music pretty much. Specifically, Mike Fabio of uh, New West Records sent me uh, a bunch of CDs earlier this year after seeing my review of Chuck Prophet's Age of Miracles. Um, holes from last year, uh, and one of the CDs that he thought I might dig would be uh, the new Lily and Madeline album, and I did. You know, didn't get a chance to review this album, but you know, still, you know, uh, I think uh, what makes this record, you know, such an intriguing listen, are their are their vocal harmonies, like uh, Lily and Madeline's, uh, you know. Uh, the chemistry that they have with their voices, especially when they sing together, is very beautiful, I will admit, you know, admit, which is pretty much what, you know, some critics have, you know, pretty much praised them for on, like, their first couple of records. Mm -hmm. um, records, this is their first album on New West Records, uh, and I think it's a very refreshing indie pop record because, uh, you know, unlike most kind of lackluster, pretty middle-of-the-road indie pop, we have, you know, some instrumentals on here that are consistently, consistently beautiful on here and lavish and 
colorful with, uh, you know, kind of watery synths and stuff like that. Um, as well as um, uh, very intelligent uh, lyrics and, you know, the title, Keep It Together, kind of makes sense because it's kind of a record about trying to keep things together even when life gets complicated, pretty much. So it's, you know, kind of blunt, but at the same time, definitely very uh, smart, too. Um, and, uh, you know, really nice uh, record, you know. Uh, record. Nice one to listen to at nighttime, too, uh, you know, I will admit. So, yeah. I uh, really liked that. Um, one of the better indie pop albums that I've heard in a while. All right. Then number 46, the new Lake Street Dive album, Side Pony. Uh, Lake Street Dive have come through with definitely an ambitious follow-up to uh, their 2014 album, Bad Self Portraits, which was fantastic, you know, although I didn't really get around to listening to it till like, you know, before eventually, you know, deciding to check out this new album over here. Uh, and, you know, uh, so it's, so like, you know, Lake Street so Side Pony is definitely kind of an ambitious follow-up, but still kind of a continuation of the band's blend of R&B, pop, rock, blue-eyed soul, stuff like that. You know, you can't really put a label on them, pretty much, because uh, they're kind of right in the middle of, like, you know, those genres right there. And I think they came through with a very fun, charming, witty, and uh, but, but still definitely uh, very, you know, up. Uh, but, but still very, you know, uh, consistent and, you know, still pretty, uh, you know, uh, uh, palatable, you know, well, uh, easy to swallow, you know, record right here. Um, swallow record right here. Um, the band signed a deal with None Such Records, so this is probably going to get them a little more exposure. Uh, and Dave Cobb is on production here, one of my favorite modern producers uh, working today. Um, today and uh, you know uh, it's a really good album so you know I think they nailed it on this one because like you know trust me you're gonna have a lot of fun when you listen to this record when you listen to like you know the catchy hooks and you know the and, and the very clever lyrics and stuff like that all right moving on number 45 uh, finally going to give a shout out to my friends at Yep Rock Records. Uh, Jonah Tolchin. That, the new Jonah Tolchin album, Thousand Mile Night. Um, Jonah Tolchin followed up his fantastic 2014 record, Clover Lane, with a much more, with a much more stripped back and a quieter effort over here. But, you know, but, you know, he definitely doesn't play it safe here. In fact... I think, you know, this album has some more mature songwriting on it than his last one. And, you know, uh, definitely some of his best songwriting to date as well. Well, I think, uh, too. And the instrumentals on here still sound very versatile. His vocals are still great. Uh, he recorded this at the legendary Fame Recording Studio in a... Fame... Legendary Fame Recording Studio in a... Muscle Shoals, Alabama, which is pretty cool. That pretty much caught my attention right away. Uh, and, uh, yeah, you know, not much more I can say about it, you know, um, about it, like, you know, other than, you know, it's nice to see him mature a little bit while still cranking out another great record. All right. Number 44, as you can see there, is the new IOYs record, Scum with Boundaries. Um, yeah. Uh, in case you're not familiar with ILYs, they are a passion project consisting of Zach Hill and Andy Morin, uh, uh, the production team behind the experimental hip hop trio Death Grips. Um, you know, you know, this album really surprised me. You know, because I hadn't listened to the first ILYs record, but I had heard pretty lukewarm things about it. Uh, uh, but I will say, you know. Here on this new record, they definitely have, you know, you know, put out a record that is just miles better with, uh, you know, better production, better writing, and, uh, you know, also a much more versatile record. Not just a lackluster, run-of-the-mill, lo-fi, bedroom pop, 
indie, uh, uh, garage rock record. Also elements of progressive rock, art rock, and there's even a chamber pop waltz on here too. Uh, you know, the writing on here definitely is very kind of absurd, but at the same time definitely very, you know, uh, same time definitely, uh, you know, uh, very kind of, you know, uh, time also very kind of humorous and, you know, you know, pretty clever and witty because they focus on some sort of like sharp satire for a good chunk of the record. Um, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't say they improved on the vocals, however, I think Zach Hill is a much better drummer than singer, but, you know, nonetheless, this record is fantastic, so, and I don't have a hard copy because it's not available in that format, you know, it's uh, available, you know, digitally, you can listen to it on SoundCloud or YouTube, you know, if uh, you're just now discovering it now. Okay, number 43 over here, uh, the new Anoni record, Hopelessness. Hopelessness. Uh, um, uh, you know, uh, like uh, Anoni came through with, uh, you know, definitely uh, uh, probably the most powerful and most politically charged uh, electronic record of uh, 2016, pretty much. But, you know, I... But, but I also do think she did come through with a very uh, beautiful and very cathartic, you know, record like this. Um, cathartic record like this, too. Um, too. And, uh, like, uh, uh, and I like how she sort of, and, you know, she sort of covers, you know, a lot of today's modern tragedies, drone warfare, global warming, uh, just to name a few here, and even her disappointment in uh, the Obama presidency uh, on here too. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, but, you know, still, I think she definitely does bring a lot of emotion and gives a surreal quality to these songs that, uh, songs that I uh, really like a lot with her very gorgeous and ethereal vocals. Uh, vocals here, and the lyrics on here are, are pretty dark, you know, and, you know, tragic lyrics here. Um, Hudson Mohawk and and one Othrix Point Never are on production here, who uh, I think delivered some really nice soundscapes that complement Anoni's delivery uh, really nicely on here. Um, Slay on here, so uh, it makes sense to me that a lot of critics are praising this record. You know, uh, this album, I could see people's opinions being split on it, but I think it lives up to the hype, personally. So, I personally would recommend it, you know. Um, alright, uh, number 42, uh, the new, uh, you know, Dr. Dong put out two albums this year, for those who didn't know. The first one that dropped this year, uh, the one, the, the more notable one that dropped this year, uh, is uh, the Psychedelic Swamp, uh, which is a reboot of uh, the band's never released or issued debut album of the same name. Um, and I think they did a good job with this reboot right here. Um, a good job here with uh, this uh, reboot of the Psychedelic Swamp. I like how it shows, you know, how the band could be really kind of weird and eccentric and offbeat, but also beat, but also at the same time, but also at the same time, very catchy and uh, likable too. In fact, there are some great hooks on this thing, um, thing uh, as well as very inventive lyrics about um, a man by the name of Phrases who uh, goes to the psychedelic swamp to, you know, sort of. Uh, uh, who sort of goes to the psychedelic swamp to like depart from his boring everyday life? I think is, you know, quite interesting here. So yeah, so yeah, I I, I really liked it. Right, uh, number next number forty one, uh, the new Ty Seagal album, Emotional Mugger. You know, definitely one of the most twisted. Uh, sinister and uh, you know insane garage rock records that I've heard this year. 
but you know, I definitely love it for the crunchy guitars, buzzed out bass, crispy drums, uh, weird off kilter keyboards, as well as a very kind of, you know, uh, uh, as well as, you know, a very kind of, you know, uh, kind of dramatic and, you know, deep vocal performances too. And just some of his most sort of, you know, unintelligible, you know, some of his most like unintelligible, just, you know, esoteric lyrics yet. But yeah, you know, great record. Um, number 40 is uh, the new Felice Brothers album, Life in the Dark, um, uh, which, um, you know, is one of the classiest folk albums that I've heard in a while. Um, uh, that, that I've, like, uh, heard in a while, in my opinion. Uh, opinion. Uh, uh, from the very, uh, from the very smart lyrics to the very fun, raucous instrumentation on this thing. Uh, this thing is definitely a folk album that pretty much, you know, uh, you know, it, that I think will, you know, appeal to, you know, uh, to those who, uh, you know, like their folk music on kind of the rougher, more kind of, you know, raucous side, but still definitely have plenty, plenty to like about it. I think this is your record right here. Um, and it's our first on Yep Rock Records, so again, shout out to you, Yep Rock. Yeah, you know, finish off this packet, and I'll go a little bit into this packet before we finish off the video here. Um, number 39, uh, the new Efo Donovan record, In the Magic Hour. Um, Magic Hour, a very, uh, beautiful... A, a very beautiful and soothing, but yet very compelling uh, uh, indie folk record, uh, a follow-up to uh, her critically acclaimed 2013 record, Fossils, uh, which uh, was a great record, by the way. Uh, but, but I feel on In the Magic Hour, Efo Donovan kind of, you know, builds upon it with a much more mature record, but still maintains, you know, those sweet, wistful vocals, and, uh, you know, the really lavish instrumentation and, uh, and, you know, uh, and, you know, fantastic songwriting that have really kind of won a lot of, you know, critics, like, under, like, the folk circuit over, pretty much. Um, mm. all right, number 38, the self-titled album from Look Park, which is a new project of, um, singer-songwriter, at Fountains of Wayne frontman Chris Collingwood. Uh, the most recent review that I did on uh, my channel, I did the review on Christmas Eve, so it kind of makes sense. I'm doing this video like on New Year's Eve, pretty much. Uh, on, on like New Year's Eve, pretty much. Uh, definitely one of the best pop rock albums that I've heard this year. Um, this year, uh, great hooks on this thing, and uh, you know, and, you know, the production on here sounds fantastic, you know, stick, and, you know, I, 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 Chris Collingwood really just show off his songwriting talent here, too, um, here, too, and I like how this album sort of celebrates the, the, the 60s and 70s era of, um, psychedelic and, uh, pop rock music without, like, rehashing it or anything like that. Alright, number 37, uh, the new YG album, Still Brazy. Definitely one of the most surprising hip-hop albums that I've heard this year. Um, you know, definitely a much more, you know, topical and much more consistent uh, record right here, even though I haven't listened to My Crazy Life. Um, here, but, but, you know, I think this is a really great um, you know, rap album from, uh, you know, uh, the West Coast right here, um, from, uh, the West Coast right here, um, with, uh, you know, some topical song subjects that are blunt, but still definitely very intelligent, too, um, too, uh, a great flow, uh, a, a better flow here, the beats on here are killer, and also some amazing features on here from people like uh, Sad Boy, 
AD, Brick Baby, uh, Slim 41, Slim 400, and uh, uh, Nipsey Hustle as well. Uh, and uh, so on here. And you know, it's a pretty conceptual record, you know, and it does cover topics of like, you know, problems in the hood as well as like, you know, you know, p police brutality as well. But probably the loudest statement on the entire album comes in the form of the song Beep Donald Trump, which, you know, is uh, easily my favorite track here. I mean, that song is the truth. Um, uh, mm, uh, you know, and uh, next, number 36, uh, the new Tony Joe White album, uh, Rain Crow. Um, Crow. Uh, the legendary uh, blues... Uh, uh, a blues Americana singer song writer, uh, you know, definitely did come through with a very solid uh, album right here. Um, here with a very uh, kind of, you know, I, I like how the vocals on here, you know, they are, he isn't necessarily like singing, but rather kind of reciting these pretty, you know, uh, 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 reciting these pretty cool, you know, uh, you know, stories about like, you know, uh, stories about like, you know, about like the swamp and, you know, uh, stuff like that. Uh, you know, and he has the ability to bring up, you know, pretty vivid imagery here. And also you have that against uh, some uh, really nice uh, bluesy production on here. So, uh, bluesy production here. Um, uh, so yeah, I definitely uh, do uh, recommend giving this album a try pretty much. Uh, you know, so so for any, so if you like kind of those kind of, you know, patience testing but still very intelligent kind of song writers like maybe Leonard Cohen or Tom Waits, I think you're gonna find something to like on here. All right, uh, five more five more entries here. Uh, you know, before uh, we stop the video here. Um, Starting here with this packet, um, number 35 is uh, the new Swans record, The Glowing Man. Uh, you know, definitely one of the best experimental rock albums that I've heard this year. This album was like my introduction to Swans, but, you know, but I think this is probably a good place to start, pretty much, uh, as the band's catalog is very diverse and stuff like that, you know, as uh, they've played around with sounds like noise rock, goth rock, neo-folk, and uh, it seems they kind of have a melting pot of pretty much all of that here on this record. Um, and they've created a very challenging, but yet a uh, very compelling two-hour double album over here. Like, it's definitely a very cathartic and complex record with, uh, you know, very detailed instrumentation uh, and very powerful soaring vocals from frontman Michael Jera that I think carry the lyrics here really nicely. It's definitely a very kind of, you know, it's a record you kind of have to listen to, like, you know, like, 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 it's a record that I do recommend listening to as a whole in the right setting, of course, because, uh, tail, uh, tail, in the right setting, of course, like vinyl, like, you know, it's a record that I would recommend, uh, that I would much rather recommend, like, you know, you listen to maybe at, like, in the comfort of your own home, like, you know, instead of, like, in the car, pretty much. I owe myself a vinyl copy of it. Sounds stunning on vinyl. Um, well, um, okay, um, number 34 here is, uh, the new Dawes album, uh, We're All Gonna Die, which, uh, you know, the folk rock the California folk rock band known as Dawes uh, came through with uh, definitely their most ambitious album to date. So apparently the Avid brothers aren't the only folksters to uh, try something new on their latest full-length album this year. But so did Dawes, too. Um, did Dawes, too. Like, uh, the record... Uh, like, you know, uh, Taylor Goldsmith's, uh, you know, Lyrics are still, you know, definitely very, you know, intelligent and, you know, very earnest and poignant, which is pretty much what drew me to the band to begin with, pretty much. Uh, 
which, excuse me, and it still has kind of that folk rock sensibility to it, but also I think this record, uh, but I also like how this record is able to show that the band could also crank out some really solid hooks too, as well as, uh, as well as very smart, uh, Mark, uh, poetry, you know, like there's some great hooks on here, you know, uh, that show the band. So, so it's definitely their most accessible album to date, but still definitely very quality stuff here. Um, here, and also this album does sort of show a side of Dawes that I would have never expected, especially on the boozy single over here when the tequila runs out. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna have to you know, uh, not really speed it up, but, you know, try to make, try not to make it too long for these last few entries before stopping the video, but anyway. Number 33 is, uh, the new Nora Jones album, Day Breaks. Uh, Nora Jones came out with a fantastic jazz record this year, like, her first, like, jazz album, like, uh, in, like, over a decade now. Um, for a decade now, and I think she came through with some of her sharpest original compositions yet, as well as, uh, you know, some great covers. My favorite of those being the horn-drenched uh, rendition of Neil Young's Don't Be Denied. Um, all right, um, uh, number 32, two albums from the same artist as you can see uh, over here. Uh, uh, the new, the new uh, DOC's records, um, uh, Weird Exits and An Odd Entrances, which are both like companion pieces to one another, but both kind of have a different sound to them. Uh, let's start with the Weird Exits. Really killer, uh, or, uh, tenacious, hypnotic, ballsy, gutsy garage rock record from easily one of the most prolific uh, bands working in that kind of, you know, on spectrum today. Um, from today, you know. And then we have, uh, a Weird Exits, which, uh, you know, is a little more mellow than, uh, you know, the first one that I mentioned from the band, but still definitely plenty ambitious and still definitely has some teeth to it, you know. To it, and I and I thought that and, and I thought that transition from that record to this one was pretty refreshing because uh, you know uh, it really does show you know John Dwyer's you know uh, how John Dwyer you know has talent as a songwriter even though that wasn't really the forefront of the last one of of the last record. All right, finally, finally for this part, I'm gonna. Reveal number 31, which is the new Rayla Montaigne album, Uroboros, uh, which uh, another record that really surprised me this year. I mean, before this, I've really only been a casual fan of his. Really, the only album of his that I liked from front to back was Till the Sun Turns Black. Uh, but uh, this album really wowed me, you know. Uh, I mean, this is definitely... Uh, Real Montaigne at definite at his most, you know, uh, ambitious, uh, conceptual, and and definitely some of his most beautiful too. Uh, you know, Jim James of My Morning Jacket handled uh, the uh, does handle the production here, and you know, uh, and I think the and I think Jim James's kind of atmospheric, colorful production along with Ray's kind of you know. Uh, and along with Real Montaigne's delivery, really complemented each other really nicely. It's two parts, so I definitely recommend listening to it as a whole, pretty much. Uh, I mean, even Ray himself recommended listening to it a a a as a whole, and, you know, whole, pretty much. Um, mm, like, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, his vocals are really nice, and you know, and, and, and like, you know, this the vivid imagery and the songwriting really fits with, uh, you know, the very uh, ethereal kind of soundscapes that Jim James creates uh, around everything. Uh, so, yeah. So, so yeah, great, uh, like, psychedelic folk rock kind of record. So, yeah, that's it for part one of my top 50 albums, top 50 favorite albums of 2016. See you for part two.